If you have an existing AMD Ryzen 5 3600, should you consider upgrading to the new Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series, the 5600X? Is your GPU going to bottleneck if you don't upgrade? Let's talk about all this and more. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Makes me very happy. Remember to subscribe if you like the content. Hit that notification bell. Leave a comment below. I want to know if you're running a Ryzen 3600 and if you're planning on upgrading to the 5600X. So recently, AMD just announced their Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, and that's pretty cool because all these GPUs are coming out now and they make the perfect pairing with new CPUs and new GPUs. Having them in stock, of course, is a matter entirely out of our control, but we can at least theoretically talk about what CPUs are going to work with what, because eventually the hope is those that want a new GPU eventually can get them in stock. May not be now, but I think that's the hope we all have. So the question for today is if you're a current Ryzen 5 3600 owner, should you upgrade to the 5600X, which is basically, at least for now, the lower SKU on the four different CPUs that AMD recently released? Let's talk about a few very important factors. Now, off the bat, it seems like the newer 500 series motherboards will be ready to go for these new Ryzen chips. I would suggest that you check on the compatibility of your current motherboard if you do have an older one, just to make sure that it's going to be able to run the new Ryzen you know, 5000 series without any type of BIOS updates. Most likely there'll be BIOS updates anyway, so you should do that regardless just for all of the different updates that come out to make your experience better. But aside from that, the biggest factor we have to talk about here is going to be the price. Now, let's remember that the 3600 isn't exactly the same thing as the 5600X because of that X moniker. Previously, in the past generations, you would have something like the 3600 and the 3600X. Basically, the only difference was the frequency that these chips came in. Some people would say that the X can overclock a little bit better with better voltages than their counterpart, but in general, the frequency really was the differentiating factor. Um, and that means that most people would recommend that you skip the X variant completely and just get something like the 3600. It's going to be cheaper and you can overclock it a little bit anyway in order to meet what the stock 3600X would be. For now, we don't really have this sort of dilemma just because only the 5600X is announced. Who knows if AMD will primarily just leave it as these X monikers, but I do believe that probably eventually it would make sense for them to release the vanilla version of the CPUs. That way they can come in a little bit cheaper because there is a massive price gap between the previous generation and this one. And this is the first question that you should ask yourself. The Ryzen 5 3600 was around $199. The 5600X is is $299, which is $50 more even than the 3600X. So across the board, these CPUs have gone up MSRP around 50 bucks, and that's a pretty big difference. If you're coming from something that's a little more budget friendly like the 3600 to go into something like the 5600X, I mean, a $300 CPU in the past was almost the price of like an 8700K, which was pretty much the top boss CPU. So CPU prices certainly have crept up, and while it it doesn't matter nearly as much on the higher end like the 5950X is an almost $800 CPU. It certainly does make a huge difference under $300. So if you're coming from a 3600, which by the way, I've seen in sales like in Micro Center and even on different places for around like $160. So you're spending almost twice the price to get the 5600. You have to first ask yourself if that price difference is worth it for the advancements that Zen 3 brings. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So the first question that a lot of people ask me is, will the 3600 bottleneck my GPU if you're getting something from NVIDIA's 3000 series, like a 3080 or the upcoming 3070, or even possibly AMD's own RX 6000 series? Will the 3600 bottleneck a GPU like that? The answer, to get right to the point, most likely, yes, it will bottleneck those GPUs, just because the 3600 doesn't really boost that high compared to the newer CPUs. So generally, you're going to be dealing with not only the, the clock speed, which doesn't boost anywhere near as high as Zen 3, nor the other Intel platform CPUs. The latency is definitely more on these Zen 2 CPUs, and the IPC as well isn't as good as the stuff that's newly released now. So in general, a 3600 certainly at 1080, 
1440p, even in some cases at 4K where the GPU definitely takes more of the responsibility, it will serve as some type of bottleneck just because it doesn't have the specs to really keep up with these powerful, powerful GPUs. Then of course, if you look at the price, under $200, certainly to be expected, you can't really expect a $200 CPU to be able to match a really expensive like $700 RTX 3080 or a 3070, which is gonna be around 500 bucks, but with 2080 Ti level performance. So it's sort of to be expected. So yes, a 3600 will certainly bottleneck those GPUs. Now the question is, is that worth the upgrade to a 5600X? Remember, it's over $100 more, maybe almost twice the price if you consider the 3600 will be on sale. But let's talk about some of the benefits that the 5600X will bring that will certainly diminish CPU bottlenecks. So first and most importantly, Zen 3 is geared completely at gamers and enthusiasts. Traditionally, AMD was really going for more like the value crowd, the multi-core threaded workload performance. But now they're really gunning for Intel, they're trying to get that gaming king crown with the 5900X, which is the 12 core model. So certainly with the 5600X over the 3600, they're definitely even more gaming focused now. And those benefits are gonna come in a few key areas. First, it's a much higher boost clock. Now it's going all the way up to 4.6 gigahertz. Now that's not gonna be sustained on all cores or anything like that, but at least that's a much higher sort of single use sort of boost speed that we have now compared to the 3600, it's certainly higher. So that's definitely gonna help in a lot of single core applications, which mainly means more gaming optimized. Latency is gonna be lower. IPC is also significantly better compared to previous generation. All these things are things that actually Intel really had over the Ryzen 2. That's why Intel technically was the gaming king, even if they weren't the king in most people's hearts and minds. But now, Zen 3 certainly has a significant stake in the game, and that's what actually makes the 5600X kind of worth the price. And now that AMD certainly is in the ballpark of being the gaming king, that's what, in their opinion, they feel that the 5600X at the $50 increased MSRP from the 3600X, $100 increased from the 3600, let's remember that, they feel that is justified because their chips are not only a good value still with multi-threaded performance, but now they're also going to be really good for gaming with the previous improvements that we mentioned before. And if you go really deep into it, there are various other improvements as well to this seven nanometer process. We're just sort of touching on the, on the surface, on the subject, but in general, these chips are certainly geared for gaming and certainly geared to go head to head with Intel. So knowing that, should you upgrade your 3600 to the 5600X? If you're very budget conscious, I would certainly wait. We have to see if uh, AMD is going to announce maybe a regular vanilla 5600 that might be like 250 that may be a little bit easier to stomach for people that are building on the budget um, or perhaps they may even announce a little bit lower skew like a 5500x or something like that which would come in closer to that 200 dollars price mark that the 3600 was because there's a really big gap right now and the 200 cpu price level is certainly a very important one and i know that amd doesn't want to lose that spot to intel if AMD doesn't have something there, you can bet that Intel will either release something with the 11th generation that's very competitive, or at least lower prices for their current generation in order to snag that spot from AMD. Certainly something that AMD really wants to avoid happening because they've been so dominant the last few years across the board. The worst thing they want to do is lose that budget market back to Intel. Then Intel has a fighting chance at slowly creeping back up again, just like AMD did to Intel the last few years. But now let's say but now let's say if you can stretch your budget a little bit more and you can actually fit a 5600X in your budget, of course, we have to see for the benchmarks to come out to see how it compares versus the similar Intel chips like the 10600K and those similarly priced gaming uh, CPUs. But in general, if you can stretch your budget, I think you would definitely get a much better performance in games, much lower CPU bottlenecks than something like a 3600. If you're going to go out and you're actually able to get a 3070 or a 3080, I would certainly recommend that you upgrade to at least a 5600X. And remember, the higher up you go, the better CPU performance you're going to have in general. I would certainly think it's worth the upgrade over the 3600. There have been so many improvements that specifically target gaming that I think you're just 
just going to have a much better gaming experience. Now, like I said, if it's out of your budget, wait a little bit longer, and that way you can see the next SKU that AMD releases, maybe a vanilla 5600, maybe a little bit lower tier. That way you'll more easily be able to fit it in your budget. Now, out of the gate, all of the 500 series motherboards will be compatible with the new Ryzen 5000, including, of course, the X570, B550. All of these more recent 500 series motherboards will be compatible. Um, the 400 series motherboards will also be compatible, but I believe that there's going to be a BIOS update. Um, according to AMD, they said it's coming in 2021. I don't know if all motherboards are going to be the same. That's why I advise to check for compatibility with the current hardware that you have now. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Remember to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Makes me happy. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next video.